now it should be good. So now I've completed the challenge and look at that. We completed that one. Hello everyone, I'm Landon Schlangen and today we are going to do the backend development API projects. We're gonna start with the timestamp microservice. So if we look into this, we can see that we have to make an app that's functionally similar to this one right here. And this one, it looks like when you put in a date after the API part of, of this URL, uh, then it will return to us that time in in Unix and also in UTC. So that's Friday, December 25th, 2015. Um, if we put in the Unix code, then it will also give us this answer. But if we put in a invalid date string, so like ASDF, then it just says error invalid date. So those are the three cases that we need to uh, account for. And to get started, uh, we can use our REPL it starter project to complete our project. So I'm gonna do that and uh, just click on it and then it should uh, take you to your account. If you don't have an account, make sure to create one first. Um, I think I just logged in with Google or something or logged in with GitHub, one or the other. And then once you get the screen open, you should be able to just import from GitHub. Yours might be a, a white color theme. Uh, if you want to change themes, you just go to themes here and you can change themes. I'll show you how to do that. All right, here we have it open. It starts with the, the readme part of the project, but what we work in is in the index.js file. And this is what we're gonna have to change. We're gonna have to change uh, this, your first API endpoint, we're gonna have to change that. Uh, anyway, to change your uh, the theme on this thing, I think you go to your name and then go to themes. And then you can choose from a bunch of community made themes. There's there's so many of them. The one I'm using is called uh, Winter is Coming. It's the same one that I have for um, VS Code. And I really like this theme. So that's the one I'm using. Uh, you could use the default VS Code Dark. It looks like this. Uh, that one's also really cool. And uh, yeah, that's how you change themes. Choose one that's right for you. All right, so what do we actually have to do for this one? Well, the tests are down here. Um, like we, like I said, we have to make it functionally similar to that uh, this project right here. Uh, but what does that entail? It entails making an API colon date uh, portion and then if we do an invalid date, it returns error. Oh, also if it's empty, it should just return the current time. So if I go up here and I put in slash API with uh, no part there, and it just says the current date, which is March 18th of 2023. So, all right, so when we look at this, we have to change this first API endpoint to be colon date. And then we have to take that date and do something with it. So we can grab the date by going let date equal new date and then grab it in the params. So we can do that with a rec dot. Um, also, you should get some IntelliSense on this, which is really nice. I don't think they had this before, but since it's been updated, now they have IntelliSense on, on REPL. And that's uh, pretty awesome if you ask me. So we can find it in the params dot date. And uh, whatever this date part here, it has to match up to whatever is said right here. Otherwise it won't work. Okay. And then we can go uh, and say, if this thing is an invalid date, then we have to respond with an error uh, or we have to make it into an integer so that we can turn it into a date using the, the Unix code. Uh, so I'm going to create a function up here called is invalid date, invalid date. And this, we have to pass in a date. And basically if the date dot to UTC string equals invalid date, invalid date, then, it, then we'll know that it's an invalid date and then we can uh, uh, respond accordingly. So I'm going to call that function. We're going to say if is invalid date and we're going to pass in our date and then if it's an invalid date first uh, uh, then we know that it is probably either uh, a string of characters in which case it would be invalid date 
or it was a, a number passed into here and it wasn't parsed. So if first we'll handle the part if it's not parsed correctly, and that we do with date equals new date, and we parse it out with a plus in front of our uh, rec.params.date. And that will actually take it if it's a number and, or, and turn it into a number instead of being a string. All right, so also our res.json, we're gonna have to change. It, we're gonna respond with a unix time, unix, and that's gonna be our date.getTime method. And that will get that for us. And then for UTC, it's uh, the same thing as what we use for invalid date. It's date.2UTC string, date.2UTC string. And it should format or auto complete for me. And then also when I save, so if I do control S, um, the file will save and format for me, which is nice, but I think I have my formatting pretty good already. Um, anyway, uh, this will handle most of the cases just right off the bat here. Uh, and we can run it by just clicking this big run button up top. And then it will configure it inside of this part of the project. Yeah, here we go. Here's our URL, and then we can actually just test it out right now. If I click on this, here we go, we get our time. So that's working, and then we can refresh to go back and check this one out, um, and that also looks pretty good. The, the parts that we aren't accounting for, also I can open it in a new tab and then try out the slash API part. If it's empty, that one we can't get, and if it's a really bad, messed up one, then it just says invalidate for UTC and null for Unix, which is wrong. We need to account for that. So I'm just gonna do uh, if is invalid the date again, because this time the date has changed on this one. And if it's still an invalid date, invalid date, then we can respond with error invalid date. Okay, so to respond, we just do rest.json and we say error invalid date, invalid date. Make sure it's capitalized, yeah. Okay, and then we also need to return out of this, otherwise it's gonna hang for a while. And you can't have, you can't respond with two res.json's. You have to respond with just one. Okay, so that will handle that case. The other case is when it's empty. And to handle when it's empty, we have to do another route. And we have to just say app.get to slash API so that it picks up uh, when it's empty. Otherwise, it's gonna say cannot get slash API. So we do that with just creating our own endpoint again, slash API. And we can do rec res and do an arrow function if we want, um, which is usually what I do. It's just a little bit more clean. We don't have to have this function keyword in here. And then we can just respond with our date. So we do res.json and we respond with unix of new dates and uh, get time. And then uh, if you pass in nothing to a new date, then it gets the current time or the current date. And then we can format it with its different functions like get time and to UTC string. So I'm going to do that here. New dates dot to UTC string. And yeah, that should be all she wrote. Now, if I stop and start it, and yes, you do have to stop and start it, otherwise it's not gonna work uh, and not update correctly. Um, so now if I open this up again, I can also go back to here and refresh. And now it says invalidate for that one. And if I just do slash API, it gives me the current time, which is March 18th again. All right, so I think this is everything we need for this. Uh, yeah, pretty simple. All we have is an invalidate uh, checker, and then we check it twice, um, changing the date along the way. And if it's still invalid, we say invalidate. Um, otherwise, we can respond uh, with our time and our UTC string. And if it's empty, then we just do new date for the current time. Now, to submit this, all you have to do is take your, uh, your base URL and plug it into the solution link, paste that in, and say I've completed it, and it will run the tests. Oh, actually, I messed one up. We have to make sure this empty date parameter is in a UTC key. I must have messed that up a little bit. 
Oh, I said UTX. Aha. So now, now it will work. So I have to stop and start it again just to make sure that it um, updates correctly. And now it should be good. So now I've completed the challenge. And look at that. We completed that one. Uh, the next thing we have uh, is also pretty simple, I think. But yeah, that was this challenge. If we want to, we can put it on GitHub. I think there is a Git integration with this. So we can open up Git. Uh, let's see here. Thought they had Git tools. Oh yeah, they do. We can check out check out the Git tools. Uh, and right now we can see that the remote is Free Code Camp's origin, but we could change that to ours. Um, I guess I could show that. So if I go to my GitHub. You might as well throw it on GitHub. I mean, it, it was a pretty small project, but we could just throw it on here. Uh, FCC timestamp microservice. And then we can create this. It's public repo. Okay, so if we want to throw this on GitHub, we have our, our, our new uh, Git re repo. And in order to throw it on GitHub, we first have to remove uh, what's already here. So now, uh, or do this thing here. Uh, so we have to do git fetch dash dash unshallow. Git fetch dash dash unshallow. And then that will uh, grab the unshallow part, and then we can add our own uh, git repo, because right now it's their free code camp git. So now we can change it to ours, and we can change it to ours with, uh, or we can first remove it. So git remote remove origin. Okay, I think that removed it. And then we can add our origin by doing this line here, git remote add origin. Copy that. And to paste it in here, you have to actually right click and paste. And then we should be good. And then I can do git add all, git commit, dash m, everything. And then I can git push. And I have to do git push dash u origin main. And there we go. So that went right into here. If I refresh, there we go. We have all of our, <laughs> all of the commits. So if I go into my index.js, that's, uh, that says my commits. And yeah, now we have it on GitHub. Cool. And then we can just take our microservice and throw this on free code camp as well. And yeah. Say so we've completed it and it will run the tests again uh, and be good. All right, awesome. Anyway, if you liked the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.